receive my miracle, I receive my breakthrough in the atmosphere of faith. You can be changed in the atmosphere of faith. Miracles take place in the atmosphere of faith. You can be changed. Oh, I believe in you. Everybody sit down. Our ministry tonight will start with eight people. Every time I call and ask you to allow the power of God to fight for you, don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Refusal to allow God to fight your battles will leave us with a problem we cannot solve. Please cooperate with me. We have, what are the engineers? This, this is what we call noise. It's not sound. Can you stop it? We have eight people here. Stop movement. Please stop going up and down. Madam, sit down. We have eight people here who had terrible dreams this last one week. And it has bothered them and confused them and depressed them and made them unhappy. Because they can't interpret the meaning of the dream. They don't understand what the enemy is trying to say. If you are one of those eight persons, or God, who is that person marching like a headmaster? Uh, is the headmaster. So you're a magician. If you are one of them, can you please stand up and stand up quickly? Eight of you. No, you didn't hear me. You had a dream that left you depressed and unhappy and confused and frightened. Can we have our helpers from the choir and the ushering group? Can you please stand, step out and help us? When the power of God 
overwhelms and envelops and saturates you. Don't be in a hurry to stand up. Wherever they will position you, on, I will ask them to put you on your seat. Relax. Let God finish what he's doing. Sometimes I'm pain that we are limited. There are problems of life we cannot solve. But the God I preach can solve every problem. It's because God cares and God loves you that he gave me that revelation. Men and brethren, there's what to call the ministry of intercession. There are people that pray for others. And when the people you're praying for are in trouble, God will reveal that trouble to you. I pray for you every day because you are my church. You are also my family. When you are doing well, we are doing well. If you are not doing well, we are not doing well. Take it as a serious appointment with God tonight. Before we begin to hear about the Holy Communion and what God will do tonight, I want God to set you free from every plan and plot of the enemy. I want God to overrule the enemy. I, apart from our helpers, the ushers, those of them from the choir, no more movement. Okay? Mothers, teach your children how to respect and reverence and acknowledge the peculiar concentrated presence of God in our meetings. Where there is lack of respect for God, he will not walk. He will not perform miracles. But where we honor him and respect him and reverence him, he will fight our battles. Tonight, I want God to fight your battles. If you are a worker, face the crowd, not me. Don't. If, they, if you came out of the choir or you came out of the ushering group, face the people. Don't face me. All others can weep by our hearts in prayer. Everybody. Except the helpers who have come to help us. Father, you showed me eight people last night who were engaged in a battle they could not win. But you left me with a promise that you are going to fight for them this night. You didn't give me their names, but you know every one of them. I therefore demand from person to person, Whoever is involved and engaged in the battles of life, Father, move from person to person. Whoever woke up from sleep frightened, whoever woke up asking, What is my God? I want you to demonstrate your power on their behalf. You told me there will be there were eight, and now we have more than eight people. Therefore, only you can set the real eight person free. And I demand the freedom. The enemy has no right to harass them anymore because Jesus died and resurrected. Uh, on that cross, he said it had finished. He had fought for us. And we have no other battle to fight, but to receive the miracles he had provided. Therefore, move from person to person. From family to family. From village to village. Let your power arise. And let your people be set free.
be set free be set free thou power of God in the name of Jesus move put down the seat put them on seats put them on seats that's number four That's number five. That's number six. That's number seven. That's number eight. That's number nine. Number ten. Number eleven. Father, I am particularly interested. In the lives that the enemy want to terminate. I have asked over and again, no member of this fellowship be allowed to die prematurely. Every plan of the enemy to cut short the life of anyone. I stand on that name that is above every name. I declare it cancelled. <laughs> Father, how many do we have now? Eleven, sir. Father, on my right hand side, on my left hand side, and in front of me, if there is anyone that the enemy is chasing after him or her, or chasing after his business, or her business, or anyone that may want to attack with sickness, I demand their freedom, I demand their healing, I demand their restoration. Somebody help. Somebody help. That's number 12. Number 12. Number 13. Number 14. 14. Can we say to him, You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are the mighty God, the great I am. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray the apostle of Oh, 
by my spoken word tonight go from family to family from person to person all those who are crying saying God don't pass us by let the miracles come somebody help somebody help father if you will not fight for your children who else will you fight for we are gathered because we love you and we celebrate you and we know you are our father our God our God our lover you are all that we need in life with you on our side we shall lose no battle you have the final word over every one of us when you speak you have spoken the oracle has spoken therefore whoever is part of this service tonight shall not go home empty handed
Father, in every battle your children may be involved in, beginning tonight, fight for them. I heard a testimony that made me cry. A man said his child died for ten, six days. And he heard I was speaking for Zili. He brought the dead child to Zili's church. And I asked Zili to get me a little pint of water. And I poured the water into the mouth of the dead boy. And he sneezed. At the Koza meeting, the song I just sang last was the song we sang. People say the power of God took over the services across the world. People were being healed. People were being delivered. Please, take your seats. Bring it to a Bible, bring it to a pain. We are going to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28. We'll take verse 13. I want you to listen attentively and intently and earnestly. I have a dream, a desire, and a very compelling desire. Come, those of you who are going up and down, is it possible to be quiet and be still? That child running, let somebody hold that child. We are in the house of the Lord who must respect him. This God says, be still and know I am what? God. When you bring your, ch your child to our fellowship, warn the child, teach the child, tell the child to recognize the presence of God and honor him. Yes, sir. And the Lord shall make thee the head. Right where you are sitting... Tonight, because of the communion we're about to take and the anointing oil we're about to take, there is a promise from heaven. This God wants to make you the head in everything you do. The only reason why Jesus died is that you may become somebody. He came that you may be raised up. You will no more be the tail. You will no longer be struggling. One of the puzzles of my life is to see God bless me with surplus supplies. I don't have to pray for many. I hear people call. A young man came all the way from Benin and said, God asked me to give you Millions of naira. Here is the money. I asked him, were you carrying this money from Benin to you? He said, yes. One of the leading sons of Ohafia, where I come from, came here and said to me, my wife, a foreigner, has cancer of the breasts. If your prayer can heal her, I'll bring you 10 million next week. And I, I said to God, Father, I like the sound of that money, 10 million. Huh? It will tell so many stories in my life. I will change so many things. Come. How many of you would like to have God drop 10 million with you? Huh? The next week, I saw him carrying a big cattle all the way from Mexico to you. My friend, 
What are you carrying? He said, I promise you 10 million. If this beautiful wife God gave me could get healed. By the time I got back to Mexico, she had been healed. So here is the money. And I, I, I said to God, a boy as generous as this young man, if you can make him a bank owner, he will bless this my ministry, he will bless my family, he will bless your kingdom, he will bless your people. Father, make him a bank owner. Men and brethren, as we speak now, he now owns a bank. He bought my wife a Lexus car and bought me a Range Rover and bought my second daughter. Madam, what's the name of that car? You remember? You don't know. Old age is a bad thing. He bought a bus for the college. And he promised to sponsor greater Ohio for Christ's crusade the remaining days of his life. <laughs> the Bible said this awesomely awesome God shall make you the head, not the tail. Stand up and say to two person, God shall make you the head and not the tail. <laughs> not everybody believes in the lifting and the promotion of this almighty God. We had a program in Medugri. A young man sponsored that program single-handedly. When the governor asked me, how shall we know that a great prophet had visited Medugri? I told him, tonight it will rain and houses shall collapse. He said, this is Christmas, doesn't no matter rain here. Okay, that is what will make it a miracle. <laughs> Men and brethren, it rained, cats and dogs. Houses were brought down. Trees were brought down. The young man who sponsored this program, I invited him over to my hotel room. And I said to God, Father, prosper him and make him a rich man beginning today. He raised his hand and protested. He said, Father, I don't want to be rich. I don't want to have three meals a day. Don't let this one make me rich. I'm not interested. And I said, Father, I spoke before him and I have overruled him. <laughs> there are people who don't believe in the blessings of God coming upon them. Those people are unbelievers. The only way your family members will know that this God is with you when your problems are solved without you breaking your sweat. The first time I went home with the Mercedes Benz, somebody asked me, did you hire it or rented it or stole it? What did you do to have such a beautiful Mercedes Benz? And I said, God, sent it to me. He asked me, you saw God where? My friend, I meet him every day. How many of you meet this God every day? Then, can I have your hand raised up? Then you are a child of God. By the blessings of God, we shall know you. By your suffering, we shall also know you. <laughs> My second daughter was found in Lagos, jumping from Moldova to Moldova with a lot of foreign currencies. 
The priest arrested her. So tell us what business you do. How come you have so much money? Who are you? And she said she's a Reverend Dr. Omar's daughter. They said, no. If you were his daughter, he would give you a car to drive in Lagos. Not job from Mulwe bus to Mulwe bus. There's a way you look, you don't look like a child of God. Satan has a way of disgracing non-believers. But I want to announce tonight, you, among those that God shall lift up. You normally will laugh for self-pity, a laugh for struggling, a laugh for murmuring, a laugh for grumbling. Whatever you're fighting, whatever, whichever area of your life you're fighting this stupid demon we call Satan, you have already been declared a winner. Can you stand up and say to two persons, in every battle of life, I shall be more than a conqueror. Please don't forget what I've asked you to quote. Ability to remember what I have taught you and said will keep Satan away from you. Can we move on? Who are reading to us? Go on, sir. The Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. The Lord shall. Can you repeat that line and say, The Lord shall make me the head and not the tail? And thou shalt be above only, and not, thou shalt not be beneath. God is talking about you. Huh? He said you'll be above only, not beneath. If that, that I was flying to. Bangladesh with other passengers. My wife is my witness. I have a gift of sleeping once I'm airborne. The man said I was busy sleeping when the plane was some assaulting. <laughs> I said to my friend, the plane cannot some assault. He said, stop sleeping in case we are, we are about to die. You know how we die. Can you shut up your stupid mouth? Because I'm in this aircraft, there'll be no crashing of the aircraft. We're going to land safely. But most importantly, don't wake me up again. I am called to sleep in every flight. Once I'm airborne, the plane will receive instruction to fly at a rate that will compel me to sleep. Old boy, just be quiet and shut up your mouth. When we landed, they ran to me and asked me, Sir, are you really a human being? I couldn't believe you could sleep the way you did. The plane was somersaulting and you were busy snoring and sleeping. Are you a human being? Number one, I don't know who you are. Number two, I don't answer everybody's question. Number three, who are you? Number four, don't disturb me again. I'm not a regular human being. If you are walking with this almighty God, the maker of heaven and earth, he who raised the sky without a pillar. I don't know whether you know, this God says his covenant with you shall be dictated by the regularity of, of light, night and day. As long as there is night and day, so shall God be faithful to you. Men and brethren, this light we see every day cannot change. Will it change? No. How many days have you been seeing light and night come and go? How long have you seen this? Since we were born, and it shall continue. It reminds you of the faithfulness of our God and our Father. Please, take your Christianity serious. 
Don't let anything distract you. Come to the house of the Lord every Sunday, every Wednesday to be refreshed, to be repositioned, redirected, to be reanointed, to be encouraged, to be comforted, to have God fight for you. Don't miss it. Other gods to serve them. Don't serve other gods. Be faithful to our God. And please, be careful what you say. Never you say, I have no one to help me. Never you say, I am unlucky. Never you say, nobody loves me. Can we see the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 28? Numbers 14:28. Yes, sir. Say unto them. Say unto them. As truly as I live. As truly as I live, says, says the, the Lord, Lord. As ye have spoken in as my ears. As I spoken in my ears, so shall I do unto you. All those who go about saying, I have no one to help me. I have no, nobody likes me. Nobody wants to help me. God will allow help to fail you. God will stay away from helping you. Therefore, be careful what you say. Please. I went to a bank in Uyo here. I met some Christians and went out to greet them. They shocked me when they all began to complain one after another. Oh, things are bad. Oh, my life is hard. Oh, I have no cobble. Oh, and unbelievers I met greeted me excitedly and concluded by saying the Lord is wonderful. With your mouth, you can bring trouble upon yourself. The way you talk must be in agreement with the Bible. The Bible says, speak of those things which are not as though they are, and they shall come to pass. When my friend called from U.S., my former classmate called from you were to ask me my other things. Always, I'll tell them, fantastic. They get angry. What is the Nigeria to make your life fantastic? Hey, every runner runs according to his sight. What I see in Nigeria that makes me happy and excited, you, you can't see it from where you are. And therefore, my life shall remain excited. Right where you are, remember to celebrate this great God. He will live your life celebrated. You will not be an ordinary person. Speak of those things which are not as though they are. And they shall become real in your life and experience. Can you raise your hand and declare, All my problems are already in trouble. And God, and God shall trouble them. He has made me the head. Not the tail. I will struggle no more. For God will make difficult things easy for me. Every voice that speaks against me shall speak no more. Every stone thrown at me shall be my stopping stone to greatness. In every battle I shall fight. I shall be more than a conqueror. At my appearance, closed doors shall open. At my appearance, what my enemy took from me shall be returned. Goodness and mercy shall follow me. No, if you believe it, shout hallelujah two times. Right, sit down. Right where you are beginning today, you are going to experience positive changes in your maritime life, in your business, in your career, in your finances. In your health, Amen. in your spiritual life. Amen. 
He has destined you for the top. And this shall be in every area of your life. Number three, our Holy Communion tonight shall compel heaven to inject into us the blood of Jesus. And whatever sickness is not in the blood of Jesus, it shall not be found in our own blood. And God is going, number four, God is going to bless us with divine life, the life of, the life of God. What does that mean? In the life of God, the way we want to experience it in your family is that you and your wife shall not spend your time quarreling over nothing. Please. I'm not saying you will not have disagreement because you don't come from the same parents. You're bound to disagree, but not to fight one another. Please, please. I am happy we have families here that the man and the wife cannot come together to our fellowship. Something is wrong with you. God does not bless a fighting house. God blesses only where there is harmony, where there is peace, where there is love, where there is care, one for another. A family where you fight one another, you, have, you can't have the the protection of God. God cannot even bless you. No, he will not multiply you. Therefore, tonight, as you listen to me, in any way your, house, your husband, your wife may have offended you, please forgive him or her in Jesus' name. It's a command. I want you to forgive one another. Let there be peace and harmony in your home. Let there be love. Let there be care. How many of you will obey my advice this night? Can I have you raise up your hand? Please raise it well. Did my wife raise her own?
I want you to stop living a life of self-pity. By that you are an enemy of God. I want you to learn how to thank this God for his mercy, his kindness, his love, his, his, his healing for you. When God blesses you on your right hand, he stretches forth his left hand to ask you to thank him. We must therefore learn to live a life of thanks. There's nothing as powerful in a marriage like thank you. A man who knows how to say to his wife, thank you, you will, she will value you. Learn how to eat her food. Lick your fingers and appreciate him. I mean appreciate her. Darling, you're a great cook. I have not met any like you. When she dresses up for service, she dresses up to honor you. Hug her. Just say to her, darling, you're smashing and gorgeously pretty. What a wife God gave me. You will hear her smile like a Cheshire cat. And she's going to sing, Kelerem Chimo. My name, Kelerem Chimo Nanchime. But if you abuse her, she will come up with one Igbo song. The song that says, Were mo, were me hand again, ma. And you go, Were mo, eze, were me hand again, ma. That is, if you like, match on my head. Haven't I offered to marry you? You can make me your slave. And please, when you're walking past where your wife is, and you hear her sing and say, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. Stop whatever you're doing and ask to know why that song. Please don't take that for granted. Hmm? I want to ask, how many of you promise me there shall be peace and happiness and love and care one for another in your house? Can you say, I so promise? Love cannot be love without gifts. Give your husband gifts, give your wife gifts. And please, when they give you, no matter what, say something. When a woman serves you food and turns to ask you, how was the food? She simply says, you are mumu. You ate my food. I spent time running around to get the materials and the condiments. And after cooking, after you have eaten, you have said nothing to me. Say something. And brother, please say something. Darling, you're a great cook. Because she's also your first aid doctor. She is a young mother. Time and again, if you listen well, your wife sounds like your mother. But God, because God gives every man a wife close to his mother. Therefore, appreciate her. Sisters appreciate her husband. Huh? It's wrong to receive gift from him and ask him, is that all? Wow. Do you know the man can go to the toilet to cry? Father, is this the woman you gave me? She is after my life and happiness. No. Learn to appreciate every gift from your husband. One day he will improve. The more money God will give him, the more gifts he will give you. Huh? Any clock that starts from two to strike is not a good clock. Life is a progressive journey. This mumu will one day become a brilliant, intelligent husband. I will even write you a love letter. How many girls will promise me in this house? that they will allow peace to reign in the family God has posted them to. Raise your hand and say, 
and allow peace to reign. Say it well, say it well. Because where there is peace, there will be happiness. Where there is happiness, your beauty will show forth. Can a happy person here shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Communion is the medium through which God raises up the believer from everything that can limit God's power. God will raise you above every obstacle on your way. Yeah. But every one of us must become a good student. Be quick to learn from God, for God is a master teacher. He will show you how to handle every bad situation. This God can show you how to turn an uncaring girl to a loving, wonderful girl. Your wife. God can, God can teach you and show you how to bring out the gold in her and bring out the best in her. There's no girl, no woman who cannot change, no man who cannot change. Even if your husband is the worst demon in you, God can still change him. Do you believe it? No, one day he'll be a nice man. He'll come home with gifts for you, with a smile for you. He'll appreciate you one day and celebrate you and honor you. He will kneel down to pray for you. He will not like sickness to stop you from playing your role in his life. Therefore, every sickness is now banished. Every quarrel is cancelled. Telling us, the, a, a man came here and said, the, the girl the people asked me to marry is a stupid girl. Hey, my brother, that's why we gave her to you. Be her teacher, be her, be her headmaster. Turn her around and make her a wonderful girl. If you have not started, you're almost late. Go and start now. The man asks, is that all you have to say? That is the best I can say. The rest will not be good for your ears. He says, say it. Ah, you're a stupid man. You don't know when to turn a girl around and make her the best in town. This God has promised whatever will limit you in this life shall be removed tonight God has a chance to raise you to the top and he wants you to be taken to the highest level of life You'll be there. Yeah. Don't worry, they will come you give your wife a uh, 50,000 naira pocket money. Yeah. No, a day will come you, you bribe her with 500,000 naira. There were these beautiful day. My wife said, hey, I wasn't called to be a preacher. I was called just to be your wife. You're dragging me all over the world. I'm tired of traveling. I will not be traveling with you again. Wow, it was like a bombshell. Madam, I have a bride for you, if you can change your mind. She asked, what's the bride? 500,000 naira, brand new notes. She asked me, can I see them? Sure, here they are. She then asked me, when shall we travel again? When your work becomes difficult, don't surrender. Keep pressing. You will touch the right button. Just so before we, we, we move on, I want you to hear me. The next girl may be worse than your wife. Because when God created woman, he created only one. Huh? Eve. He didn't create another woman. So this one he has given you. Don't run away. Finish the job. Bring out the best in her. 
turn her around. Make her a living angel in your house. Wow. I know what they want. I'm in more your mommy quay. I'm your waiting to Jehovah. I'm in more your mommy quay. I'm in more your mommy, more your mommy, more your mommy quay. I'm your waiting to Jehovah. I'm in more your mommy quay. I know what they want. I'm in more your mommy quay.
come. Pastor Joe, is that Carol dancing? Please give her 50,000 naira. Come on, I have known this girl work for us for 30 years. I am seeing her dance for the first time. not dance, one day you will dance. I have teased her, I have mocked her, I have done everything I could do to make her dance. She... Today is my first day of seeing her dance. That means there is hope for everyone here. Wow. Can we give this our God a good clap up for somebody? Take your seat. Take your seat. I, I don't know whether you know you have in a way spoiled me. When I go to other areas of Nigeria and they dance, they dance like stockfish on the wrong side of life. We are the only people who can dance to the music of the song. Can you clap for yourself? Let's go to the book of, of John chapter 6. Let's take verse 5. 54. Let's take verse 54. What does Who you say? Who so eateth my flesh? Whosoever eateth his flesh and drinketh my blood and drinketh his blood hath eternal life. You will have eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. He will raise you up on the last day of life. For my flesh is meat indeed. My flesh is meat indeed. And my blood is drink indeed. My blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth yes. in me and I in him. He dwells in me and I dwell in him. Tonight as we take the communion, the peculiar concentrated presence of God shall be our gift and our giving. Wherever you go, that presence of God will go with you. And this God shall fight all your battles. The, the, the cry, the battle cry says, stand still and see the salvation of your God. Beginning tonight, you fear no enemy. You fear no trouble. My heart beats when I see the way people panic over a problem. No, it should not be. When my son was found to be crippled, my mother would not let me rest. Mr. Preacher, your son is crippled. <laughs> I know. Every problem has time limit. When we reach there, the boy shall walk. And my pretty wife will say to me, if this boy had been another woman's son, you will not let God sleep until he walks. Madam, Every problem has time limit. This boy shall walk. I don't know what you're going through, but where there is problem, there is what? There's what? There's promise. There's also provision. And this God has a word for you. Say, fear not, for I am with you. If your father is with you, no man born of a woman shall stop you. Amen. And tonight I declare you are unstoppable. Amen. Because of time, I'm going to... Okay, let's see the book of Second Timothy, chapter 3, verse 1 through 4. Yes, sir. 
This know also that in the last day, perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, obedience to disobedience to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, trace breakers, false accusers, incompetent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away for of this sort that's okay right where you are is there anybody here that would like God to deepen your walk with him you want him you want him to help you or, or offend him not as regularly as you do now but to offend him rarely. Maybe offend him once in a year. You want to live at peace with him. You want your life to make him happy. You want him to be proud of you. You want obedience to him to come to you naturally. You want to love him more every day. For his sake, stay away from sin. For he said, give me a great giver. This God loves a cheerful giver. Serving with what you have, you never lose that thing. Those who want to walk are in a closer walk with God. Can you raise up your hand and stand up? Uh, stand up. If you want to rededicate yourself unto the Lord, you want to love this God more and serve him better. You want to celebrate him every day. Let heaven see you as God's lover. Are you all hearing me? Those of you are still sitting down. It's not the best thing. The best thing is, Father, help me to love you more and more every day. It will make your life beautiful. It will make your life healthy. It will make your life fruitful. It will make your life powerful. Can you raise up your right hand and say, Father, help me to love you more. And save you better. And obey you intentionally and intelligently. All the days of my life. May I speak words that will make you happy. Bless me with good health. Bless me with long life. Bless me with fruitful life. Whatever shall lay my hand to do, let it prosper. Let my life be life of heaven on earth. Let it increase beginning tonight. As I take this communion this night, Lift me up. As I shall anoint myself with oil, may I be protected by you. Fight all my battles. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Can you raise up your hand and place it over your head? Father, bless my life. Say it louder. Father, bless my life. Fight all my battles. With you by my side. In the battles of life, may I never lose any battle. Every sickness that has a name in my body, let it be healed. Whatever the enemy had taken from me, let it be returned tonight. 
bless bless me and heal me and anoint me may I be an instrument in your mighty hand beginning tonight in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost night of double honor. Our night of double promotion. Whoever is part of our service tonight shall not go home with any sickness. In every battle each one shall fight. You'll be more than a conqueror. Father, turn the lamentation of your children to laughter. Turn the pain to pleasure. Everything the enemy had taken from any one of us will be returned now, 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 now. Father, on that night, the only qualification the bread had was that the bread was available. 
And now we have bread, and I give thanks over the bread, and I declare this bread your body. As we eat it, as we chew it, it shall inject health to us. It shall inject your anointing and quality. And we shall cease to be ordinary people. Father, I dedicate this bread and I consecrate it. It shall cease to be an ordinary bread. It shall be your flesh in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. And that day you took the cup and blessed the drink. The quality of this drink that is available. Therefore, as we drink, let there be an infusion of your blood into every system, into everybody. Father, we are free to take this communion anywhere, in our homes, in the church, everywhere we go. Let your power and your good health be infused into us. We shall now become commanders of miracles. Bless your people and bless us with happiness and joy. Everywhere we go, in every battle we shall fight, we shall be more than conquerors. It shall be so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. At the end of the Holy Communion, I want you to give a second offering, particularly those who have not given any. It is your way of showing your excitement, your joy, your happiness, your exuberance. Let God know you love him. By giving, you're telling him you love him. But amazingly, you cannot outgive him. He will give you more than you have bothered to give. Are you hearing me? Father, this oil, remember, sorry, this offering is not money you're paying for this oil. We don't charge money here. All those who tell lies against us will pay. A young man saw me in 1974. He said, I saw you on television with so many wives. You ask girls to sing and after singing they become your wives at home. And I said to him, for say what you have just said, you have an accident and your glass shall cut off that your stupid tongue. On the way, the customer told stayed. And his tongue was cut into two. 